my god, we've got the Tamaki store as the most used team composition on defense. Uh, I mean, I could believe that considering literally everyone in the mum was using it back in the day. But I guess what's more interesting is if people are using it today. Hi, welcome back to another Princess Connect video. My name is Lace and today we're going to go through the first anniversary achievement stats. It's a whole bunch of statistics like most used teams, most used characters, most favorite characters, stuff like that. Honestly, it's been a pretty wild journey. I'll give it that. It's been a it's been a pretty hectic year and so to be honest i'm pretty excited to see as to like how this is all played out though with that said let's just jump into the stats and see what we have in store for us all right so number one we've got the top 10 favorited heroines with christina up the top really oh man that's um that's actually really really freaking surprising i know that there are a lot of like pecorin simps i know that there are a lot of kiaru simps kiaru is down at eight Okay, I guess I misjudged how many of you in the community do want to actually be dominated. I don't know. But with a New Year's Yui in the second, I mean, she's pretty lovable in that robe. You know, she's kind of cute. And then Halloween Shinobu, New Year's Ray. Okay, all right, fine, I concede. Some of these are actually pretty good picks, but like some of these are kind of surprising. Like you got your Ruka and your Ana. To be honest, this whole list is actually really surprising. All right, so let's see what we have in store for us next. Number of heroines recruited by all players, 9.2 million heroines. Wait, really? Are you... Wait, is that really it? So that means that collectively as a community, we've only done 9.2 million pulls. I don't know about you, man, but I feel like we need to step it up. Yeah, that actually feels a little bit little considering the amount of times I've had to spark and probably a lot of other people have had to spark. But then again, now that I think about it, there are a lot of you luck sacks out there. And so next we've got percentage of players who have cleared each dungeon. Cloud top peak at 46.8%. Why is that at the lowest percentage? That's uh it's very, very interesting. I guess it kind of makes sense for the 74% and the 71% to go to the middle two, considering Tideborn Tower actually gets pretty hard. And the majority of players are probably just taking it easy. However, remember that there is a stamina furniture that is locked behind each of these dungeons. So if you guys are part of the 74 or 71% statistic, or rather the inverse, so like the 26% or the 29% that have not cleared the Deepwood Oak and Sheer Cliff Ruins, you guys have better go get it, man. But wow, I'm pretty surprised at the fact that there are only 46.8% of people that cleared Cloud Top Peak. Maybe we can skip it. Maybe you can actually skip that dungeon and go straight to Deepwood Oak. Although, no, I'm pretty sure you have to clear Cloud Top Peak before you can get the next dungeon unlocked. Honestly, this image actually isn't making sense to me. So you guys let me know what you think about this, how you're interpreting it. All right, moving on. Next, we have top 10 heroines used in the dungeon. Okay. Now this, this is very, very, very familiar. Nozomi, Jun, Miyako, always, we always have to have the tanks, man. The dungeon is actually pretty brutal if you don't have them. With Makoto coming in fourth, I can see why, because we do need that defense down. Typically speaking, most people are probably going to be clearing dungeons with physical teams, and physical teams with physical defense down, that is Makoto. Then we've got Yukari with the heals, and then Ilya. Now, Ilya is an interesting one, because like when she was released, essentially you could steamroll all of dungeons, the floors at least up to the boss. So that is why I'm not surprised to see Ilya actually taking this spot over here. Now, Tamaki is an interesting one because I believe Tamaki is actually used for almost all of the bosses to make sure that they don't Yubi too often. So funnily enough, although Tamaki always is like hailed as a PvP anti-mage killer, whatever, it's it's just pretty funny to see her in the top 10 heroines used in the dungeon. Otherwise, we've got Saren over here. I suspect Saren, Yukari, and Ilya are probably used together, you know, like the trio trifecta. And then surprisingly, we've got a single target mage in Summer Kiaru. Hmm, that one's pretty interesting. In last place, we do have Kaori, who I suspect is again for the physical damage on the boss. All right, this one is pretty interesting, but actually it's kind of within expectations. I, I do quite like that list. All right, what is this one? Top 10 dungeon supports heroines. Really? Nozomi, Jun, that's okay. That is pretty surprising to see because generally speaking, Nozomi is actually quite easy to get. She comes from the dungeon shop. And so I would actually expect most people to have the Nozomi so that they don't have to borrow her. Clearly, I was completely wrong. All right, but otherwise, Jun borrow, Makoto borrow, like very, very understandable. Miyako and then the Christina, okay. 
who of you do not have Christina? Because whoever you are, if you guys don't have Christina, freaking save so that you guys can pull her during the Oko Cabana, okay? Otherwise, pretty standard ones over here. However, I do see the Pekrin and I do wonder, I wonder if it's the Pekrin UE Cheese. So if you guys don't know, back on the fourth tower or like the EX dungeon, I believe Pekrin with her UE is actually able to solo the entire dungeon by herself. Very, very similar to your Miyako Cheese. <laughs> it's actually quite interesting. I, I, I do wonder if it's actually that. All right, so top 10 frontline heroines in battle arena. Oh, okay. I would assume that all of the tanks would be sitting here. However, I don't see Lima, which is... It's, it's kind of odd. I suspect it's probably the people that are just more like newer to the game or just throwing anything at it. And most people actually don't build Lima for some reason. Like my guys, for God's sake, Lima is a llama. Like why would you not build that? Like to be honest, like it actually took a long time to convince me to build Lima. But yeah, that's probably one thing that I'm expecting that is missing from this diagram. Makoto and Christina. Christina up the front, okay. But Makoto, I feel like Makoto might be like a little bit deprioritized. And what is even more interesting is that Tamaki is down here. However, I guess it's kind of understandable considering Tamaki has kind of fallen out of the meta. Otherwise, seeing the rest of the tanks, Nozomi, Miyako, Jiu, Nugakuka, Shizuru, Pekarin, Pekarin, probably UE. I reckon her UE shot her up in those places. This is a pretty decent list, except for the Kari. The Kari is probably the most surprising one there. All right, so moving on, let's see. Top 10 middle line heroines in Battle Arena. Of course, it's Ilya. Ilya, the queen. You already know it. Saren is absolutely... Absolutely no surprise. Monica, Yukari, Akari, Mitsuki, Halloween Shinobu, Ninon, all of them, absolutely no surprises. However, Kokoro, Ana, I wonder if this is because of like the early game meta. So like pretty much everyone was running Ana in the very, very early game. And that combined with the fact that she has a magic defense down UE now, probably got her one of the top 10 spots. And as for Kokoro, that's really interesting because I do actually remember using Kokoro for like a solid potentially like six to eight months, countering combat like Ninon as well as Reno and a whole bunch of other teams, right? It's, it's actually quite interesting, although I am not surprised to see Kokoro there. Who I'm surprised is not here is actually Halloween Miyako. I don't know about you guys, but Halloween Miyako is actually quite prevalent, at least in my battle arena. So yeah, that's one unit that I am surprised to not see here. However, let's have a look at the backline heroines. Kiaru, Kyoka, Maho, Suzuna, Hatsune, Shiori, Rino, Yui, Kiaru, Arisa. Honestly, that's actually, that's actually pretty, wait a second, where is Yuki? Me personally, I certainly use Yuki quite a fair bit, but I suspect like not everybody is able to appreciate his battery skill. I suspect most people are probably throwing just like a tank and like three or four DPSs at things. Fair enough, that kind of makes sense, I guess. So most use team composition attack in battle arena, and it is literally the cookie cutter turbo Ilya comp. So you've got the Yukari juicing up the Ilya and then the Saren also juicing up the Ilya with the Monica making it all go faster. I am not surprised at all to see this one here. This comp, especially on release, was like just so dominating in attack anyway. All right, moving on, we've got most used team composition defense in battle arena and I am not even surprised. It's the mother effin at Tamaki stall. Certainly there are a lot of other variants, but like this is the OG variant. Essentially everybody was using it back in the day for quite a long time actually, all the way I think up to Ilya. So honestly, it's pretty cool to see this one immortalized here considering, yeah, I think it is a big part of history. And here we've got number of heroines upgraded to five star, 1.2 million heroines. Yeah, okay, I get that. It's actually quite hard and quite an arduous grind to actually get up to five stars. So my guys, a round of applause to all of you who are raking in those five stars. Clap, 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 clap. Cool. All right, moving on. We've got top 10 heroines used in clan battle Makoto. Man, if Makoto was not number one, I'd be very, very, very surprised. And then Kari a second, 100%. I don't, I actually can't remember a single CB where we don't use Kari. And then summon Kiaru for number three. Absolutely no surprise. Core of every single magic team. Jun, no surprise. Shiori, Kyoka, Akari, Mitsuki, Kokoro, Sama, Susuna. All of these are 100% exactly what I expected, just like playing through this whole year of clan battle. All right, moving on to the next one. Top 10 heroines used in the main quest. Oh, we've got the Yui. Okay, okay. This is, um, 
I think this is super, super true. The interesting thing about the early game is that it was really, really freaking tough. And if we didn't have a healer like Chika or Yui or potentially even Misato, then it was really, really freaking tough. And everybody has Yui. I remember running Yui back in the main quest. However, we do have the news Yui now. So I wouldn't be surprised if she would creep into this top 10 list next time. All right, moving on. Let's have a look. Top BGM used. Connecting Happy, Lost Princess and more Party Night for two. I suspect that is like the OG default one. I must admit, although I do enjoy the BGMs and their soundtracks, I don't know too much about how like you can get the top BGM used. I mean, like, do you guys set it in your guild house or something? Because yeah, I kind of play the game with the sound off. Guys, cut me some slack. Please don't crucify me for that. It's just, you know, it's a lot of multitasking going on. All right. And so after that, what have we got? We've got top 10 homepage heroines. Kokoro? Kokoro at number one? Hmm. Hmm, not what I expected at all. I would have expected at number one like Pekrin or like Summer Pekrin, although I do recognize that a lot of people probably were forced to skip her. I mean, in that regard, I kind of see where the Kokoro is coming from. Kokoro, Pekrin, Kiaru, Yui, like everybody has. Oh, thank you for becoming a member, Lee D. But yeah, I guess I do see why these three or even four characters are your top 10 homepage heroines, considering pretty much everybody has them. But then we've got Makoto in number five, which is really interesting. Probably a lot of rerollers just going for the Makoto and then slapping her onto the homepage because she isn't one of the starting characters. So in that regard, I completely get that. The rest are probably a lot more custom. Okay, and so with that, we are coming on to our last one, which is amount of gifts heroines have received. 87 million gifts? That's quite a fair bit considering the amount of bonds we actually do have to do. However, with that, that does bring us to the end of this entire anniversary summary. It's it's actually really, really interesting to see some of these statistics because like a lot of the things that you thought were going to be the case just actually don't turn out to be like Arisa. Okay, you know what? Yeah, she does deserve to be there. In terms of Ana though, okay, you know what? If she was really played as much as I said she was played at the early game, maybe it did skew the data that way. Yeah, honestly, this has been really really, really interesting. And so I guess it's time to ask you guys, like, did this kind of surpass any of your expectations? Did you see anything that made you kind of go like, wait a second, what the frick? My guys, let me know down in the comments below. And if you do end up dropping a comment, I would really appreciate that because it means you watched up until the end of the video. So thank you guys so much. If you did indeed like this video, then please consider a like. And if you would like to see more, please consider a subscribe. But otherwise, my guys, welcome to one year anniversary of Princess Connect. And as your girl Pekrin once said, all good things must come to an end. And so thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.